In the last video, we talked about the work function and how that's the amount of energy needed uh, by the photons in order to kick out an electron. Remember, if the photons have less than uh, enough energy, then no uh, electrons will be kicked out. But now you can actually make a, a, this is a separate situation, where you can make a circuit that actually stops the photoelectrons. This can be useful for a certain reason. I'll show you this. So maybe I draw a circuit. So uh, here I'm going to draw um, some sort of circuit with maybe a galvanometer, uh, which could be something that can actually measure you know, the electricity coming through something. And what I'm going to do here is here I'm going to place uh, a cathode, which is just one end of a connection here, and here I'll connect an anode. What I do is in here now I have some sort of um, I have some sort of glass, you know, opening so that a photon can come in. So photons can come in on this piece of metal here. And again, we're going to have the photoelectric effect happening on this piece of metal. So if the photons have enough energy in order to overcome the work function, then it can kick out some of these what we call photoelectrons. See why we call them photoelectrons? Because they're electrons kicked out by photons. That's why we're called photoelectrons. So they go across. And as it stands right now, I wouldn't even need this right here. But as it just goes like this right here, I might actually be able to detect um, some sort of current in the system here. But what I can do is I can connect a battery in order to oppose this. In other words, this flow of electrons, remember by definition, that is uh, what a current is. Current is um, number of coulombs per second. In other words, it's the number of charges going by per second. So if the charges aren't moving, there's no current. There's no electricity. So what we do is we set up a battery or uh, some sort of terminal voltage in order to stop it. In other words, we play around with the voltage here until we get nothing coming out. In other words, we've actually stopped these photoelectrons. Okay, so this right here, we're going to call this the uh, stopping voltage. And we're going to call it Vs, right, for voltage stopping. And that is the, the terminal potential difference. We often say PD for short in physics. Remember, that means a voltage, but it's potential difference uh, that will, or that is needed in order to stop the photoelectrons. Okay, so you can connect a circuit, you can set one up to where you do this. And now this brings me to be able to now explain um, these two equations that you get in your data booklet. They're so important and they're really easy to work with. Okay, now the equations go like this. So the first thing goes HF equals, um, it goes uh, work function, so which is this phi plus E max. I just want to make sure I wrote it down correctly because I don't know if they use EK max or just E max. Uh, I'm just going to check here. So they use E max, yeah, just like this. And then the other equation is this one. I'm going to put a little bit lower. So HF equals HF zero plus EV. And do they put a little S by it? No, they don't. But I like to see it, this is like a little S here, a little stealth S that's actually sitting there. So this is one equation. This is the other equation. These are both given on your data booklet, but they're really important. Remember, first of all, that E equals HF. So what that tells you is the incoming photons have this energy, right? So this, these are the same. That's nice, and that's because E equals HF. All right, so the energy is equal to the energy of the photons incoming is HF. There's just two different versions of the equations here. Remember what this is. This right here, let's maybe define everything actually before we do anything else. So um, let's say H is a constant. F is, uh, that's a frequency of incoming light. And that's going to be measured in hertz. We normally measure frequency in hertz. 
Uh, what else do we need? We need F0. That's the threshold frequency. Remember, that's the frequency below which no photoelectrons are emitted. Do you remember the graph before that we had of uh, energy, the kinetic energy versus F? You know, there exists this F0 here, this frequency below which nothing exciting happens, above which all the magic happens. So we put in that, that's F0. Uh, we have phi, which is the work function. Remember, that's the amount of energy needed in, or that, um, in order to kick out an electron. And that's because um, the metal is actually holding on to that electron. So you have to have the photon come in with enough energy to throw it out. Okay. Uh, e max, that is just the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons. In other words, the kicked out photoelectrons, that's their maximum energy, and that's measured in electron volts. What else do we need? Uh, well, E is just the charge of an electron, that's in coulombs, and V is the stopping voltage That'll be measured in volts. So, what this means, or what I like about this actually, I'm just going to show you something here. What I like is that sometimes you want to know, well, how big is the work function? The cool thing is, or maybe you're given the work function and asked to calculate the threshold frequency. Easy. These two line up with each other. In other words, the work function equals HF0. That's pretty nice. And in fact, if you want to see this, what if uh, they give you something about the maximum kinetic energy and they ask you about the stopping voltage or vice versa? They give you the stopping voltage and say, how fast will these electrons go? This is how you deal with them. You say E max equals EV. Remember, maximum kinetic energy here. Don't forget about this little equation right here. I uh, showed you this a couple times, actually. This is from topic five. Do you remember this equation? E times V equals half mv squared, where this big V is a voltage, and that little v is a speed. This tells you about the kinetic energy, right? This is half mv squared is a kinetic energy. So notice, the kinetic energy equals EV. See, kinetic energy equals EV. So this is how you deal with questions about photoelectric effect. You can just use these two equations and you can either go across, so what if you're given you know, everything except for one of these, then you can find it. But sometimes it helps to actually go below, and I think that's the key. When I'm looking at exam questions, I can often solve what they want for photoelectric effect just by doing this little jump like this. Okay, so I think that's really helpful. And just don't forget what everything means. You can always look up H. Um, H is just a constant, you look that up in your data booklet, just like charge, because if it's an electron, the charge of an electron is known. It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And by definition, that times 1 volt is called an EV. That's why everything is measured in electron volts. I wonder if you're getting tired of me saying that. That's because it's so important and so many students forget it. So that's just why I'm trying to sort of drill that into you right now. So that is a photoelectric effect.